Well, this is cool stuff. I just recently uh, purchased the uh, new Sony A7R2 uh, camera, and I am just thrilled with the camera. The, uh, the quality of the still images I'm getting is just fantastic, and I'm just starting to uh, use the video, shooting 4K video, uh, internally recorded 4K video. 4K means that it's about 4,000 pixels wide on the long side, I guess. Um, because it see it looks like it produces video that's 3,840 by 2,160, which is very high resolution uh, video, much higher than the standard video that we see, which is called 1080p. Um, so I don't know a whole lot about it. I'm learning it, but one thing I did discover when I shot video yesterday of a uh, blue heron uh, walking around in a, a pond at Ellison Park near Rochester, New York, I noticed when I shot that video that I was able to extract still images that are just remarkably uh, detailed, and even though uh, I wasn't zoomed in as close as I could have been. Let me show you this. Uh, you're looking at the uh, start of the video here. Let me scoot this uh, video forward. By the way, I am in uh, Adobe Premiere Elements 13, which is my video editing program. Let me scoot this forward here to uh, until the heron's about to dive in here and pick up a uh, crayfish right in there. Yeah, there he is. Let me back that up a little bit and play that for you so you can see what he's doing. Okay, let me hit the play button. And when he dives in here and gets his crayfish, I'm going to pause the video right here. And then I'm going to advance frame by frame. Basically what you're doing is shooting 30 frames per second. It's like a burst mode uh, uh, on a camera where you're shooting uh, high speed burst. 30 frames per second is producing, of all things, 23 megapixel still images from this. It's, it's amazing. So catching the decisive moment is quite easy with this. Let me right click here and set the magnification up to about a hundred percent so we can see uh, see some detail here. Let me uh, get this position where we can take a look at the heron and let me advance this frame by frame and watch him pull this uh, crayfish out of the water. I'm clicking on the uh, frame advance button down here one at a time. And you notice, um, let's see here, as the heron starts to hold still, we're getting some fairly sharp images. Um, <clears throat> I'm shooting this video at 1 60th uh, second, which is uh, the recommended frame rate for smooth flowing video. And um, I probably could shoot this higher at like 1 250th or 1 500th and probably get uh, uh, much sharper images to extract from it. But <laughs> for my first effort, I'm thrilled to death uh, with what I got at 1 60th of a second. I'm shooting with a 24 to 240 millimeter lens, the Sony uh, 24 to 240. And let's see here, let's move uh, advance a frame or two. This is a crayfish that this guy has caught. He actually drops it in a minute, but we won't see that. I'm just moving forward until I see this crayfish spread out his legs and spread out his tail a bit there. And let's pick one. Okay, I maybe went too far, let me back up there. That looks pretty sharp. Got pretty the heron's holding still and looks pretty sharp and the crayfish in there you can see his claws and there's his tail and his legs uh, uh, flailing away there. Let's capture that image and to do that in uh, Premiere Elements uh, 13 I go down to the little tools tab down here and click on it. I hit freeze frame. It brings up this uh, little dialog box where I can hit export and it's going to export this as uh, called Mind You Video Project 1 bitmap and let me hit save. And it saves it into my what I call my pick download file. I don't know why it says freeze frame duration five seconds on this. I don't understand that, but uh, you know I'm new at this, so I'm, I'm learning as I go here. I'll figure that out at some point. There's a lot of things about video I don't understand when they start using terms like uh, AVCHD and XVC dash S and S log two. I, it, it's all beyond me at this point, but I'll learn it eventually. But right now I'm just I'm just fascinated with what I can do. So. Now that I've um, captured that still image, let me open up my uh, file bro my uh, file browser down here and find right there is my new video project one. Let me right click and bring this up in Photoshop. Let's see, open with Photoshop. So there's the uh, the image and look at the size of this image that it just captured here. This is, of course, as I mentioned, 3840 wide by 2160 high and the file size is 23.7 megabytes. That means I can zoom in on this guy. See, I could have been zoomed in a lot tighter when I was shooting this and I would have even more detail. But I'm gonna crop down on this here and uh, still have a pretty reasonable image. Look at that. I, I'm amazed at the uh, level of detail I have here. What a marvelous camera this new Sony is. Let me crop in here, let's say to about here. 
And that's a pretty good looking image, pretty sharp image. Uh, probably could use a little bit of sharpening. Let's see here, I have a uh, good sharpening program in my Nick collection called uh, Sharpener Pro, which typically over sharpens, which is what it just did there. My little webcam window's in the way here. Click OK, that's actually over sharpened a bit. Let me back off the opacity on that down to about oh, 35%, 39%. That looks pretty good. There's before, there's after before and after yeah much sharper great image i'm thrilled to death that i can extract still images like this so i i love my new sony a7r2 and i'm going to learn all about video and i'm going to learn how to extract stills from video and even uh, beyond what i'm doing right here but what a way to capture the decisive moment when you can arrow through 30 frames per second and pick one of those 30 that's the sharpest and has the exactly what you're looking for in, a, in an image what a great idea it's a merging of video and still images, and, and I think they are, uh, they're coming together uh, as these cameras advance.